Hello, and welcome to The Softer Side. I'm your storytelling life coach, Shelley Carney. Today's topic is the wonders of Thanksgiving. Thank you for watching The Softer Side, storytelling therapy and life coaching. Please leave a comment and let me know your biggest challenge when it comes to stress relief and what topics you would like to see in the future. Subscribe and click on the bell to be front row center for new videos. Join us in the friendly, supportive live chat room for our live coaching videos and share the Softer Side channel with your friends and family members who need to reduce the stress and anxiety in their lives. Gratitude turns what we have into enough. I love that saying. It means, really, we feel so much better when we're just grateful for what we have. Gratitude improves your emotional life. Being grateful can improve our positivity ratio. The positivity ratio is defined as your frequency of positive emotions over any given time span divided by your frequency of negative emotions over the same time span. People above a 3 to 1 ratio flourish and create upward spirals for themselves. People below a 1 to 1 ratio perish and create downward spirals for themselves. Gratitude promotes pro-social behavior, resulting in more and better friendships. Self-focus, which diminishes with gratitude practice, has been shown to ruin people's relationships, reduce their resiliency, and damage their health and emotional well-being. Just like humility and gratitude go hand in hand, so do spirituality and gratitude. Materialism and gratitude are mutually exclusive. As one goes up, the other comes down. Research shows that as you become more focused on external stuff, you become less grateful. On the flip side, as you become more grateful, you start edging out materialistic thoughts. Gratitude is a thankful appreciation for what an individual receives, whether tangible or intangible. With gratitude, people acknowledge the goodness in their lives. In the process, people usually recognize that the source of that goodness lies at least partially outside themselves. As a result, gratitude also helps people connect to something larger than themselves as individuals, whether to other people nature, or a higher power. Gratitude is a way for people to appreciate what they have instead of always reaching for something new in the hopes it will make them happier or thinking they can't feel satisfied until every physical and material need is met. Gratitude helps people refocus on what they have instead of what they lack. Happiness and satisfaction grow stronger with gratitude practice. The subtle shift from gratitude to appreciation involves being more present, more thoughtfully aware and active in reflecting on the reasons we feel grateful about something or someone. When we truly have appreciation, we bring to mind what specific qualities about someone or something makes us feel brighter, lighter, happier, more inspired, energized, and loved. Alan Cohen said, The people who are successful are those who are grateful for everything they have. Giving thanks always opens the door for more to come. Ralph Marston said, Truly appreciate those around you, and you'll soon find many others around you. Truly appreciate life, and you'll find that you have more of it. There's a Dutch proverb that says, They are not poor that have little, but they that desire much. The richest man, whatever his lot, is the one who's content with his lot. Now let's hear the story of the seven wonders. Anna was a nine-year-old girl from a small village. She finished attending elementary school in her small village at the end of fourth grade. Anna was accepted into a very good school in a nearby city to continue her education. 
She would have to take the bus to attend this new school, and she was excited to meet her new classmates and teachers. Because Anna's family had to arrange transportation to the city for her, she began school two weeks after everyone else had started classes. Anna arrived on her first day of school wearing her best flowered pink dress. By the standards of the other students, however, her dress appeared outdated, faded, and worn. She was not deterred because she so appreciated the opportunity to attend school rather than have to go to work like some of the other children from her village. Unsure of the layout of the new school, Anna asked a group of girls, Is this the classroom for Mrs. Brown? Seeing her simple clothing and knowing Anna came from a small rural village, the girls started whispering about her poor appearance and giggling. A very bright, mature girl named Kate stepped up beside Anna, shaking her head at the behavior of the other girls. Yes, you have the correct room. Please come in. Mrs. Brown asked everyone to take their seats and quiet down as she began the class. Anna stood at the front of the room, not knowing where to sit. Mrs. Brown smiled and introduced Anna to the other students. Children, this is Anna, our newest student. Please make her feel welcome and show her around the school today. Mrs. Brown directed Anna to an empty seat. Then she announced, get your pencils out. We're taking a quiz. Children busied themselves passing out papers and pulling out pencils for the quiz. Let's see how well you listen and remember your lessons this past two weeks. Please write down the seven wonders of the world, said Mrs. Brown. The class started writing their answers quickly. Kate finished first and walked with her completed test to Mrs. Brown's desk to turn it in. She glanced over at Anna to see how she was doing on her quiz. Anna struggled with the quiz, but thought very deeply about the answers as she slowly wrote them on her paper. When everyone except Anna had submitted their answers, Mrs. Brown approached Anna's desk and quietly spoke, Don't worry, just write what you know. You'll get a passing grade just for trying since you missed these lessons. Anna's eyes twinkled with delight as she quietly replied, I was thinking there are so many wonders. Which seven should I write down? Then she handed her answer paper to Mrs. Brown, who gave her a puzzled smile as she returned to her desk to look over the quizzes. Mrs. Brown began reading everyone's answers, and the majority had answered them correctly, such as the Great Wall of China, Colosseum, Stonehenge, Great Pyramid of Giza, Leaning Tower of Pisa, Taj Mahal, and the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Mrs. Brown was satisfied that the students had listened well and had remembered what she had taught them. Finally, Mrs. Brown held up Anna's answer paper and started reading. The seven wonders are, one, to be able to see, two, to be able to hear, three, to be able to feel, four, to laugh, five, to think and understand, six, to be kind, seven, to love. Mrs. Brown stood stunned, and the whole class was speechless. Today, a girl from a small village reminded them about the precious gifts we all take for granted, which are truly a wonder. So what do you think? In what ways do we value and use what we have with appreciation? How do we express our appreciation and gratitude? And how has an attitude of gratitude made a difference for you in your life? I know for me, when I feel grateful for things, when I remember to take the time to count my blessings and think of all the things in my life that make my life so happy and fulfilled, it is a wonderful reminder of how much I have and it puts me into a, an attitude of abundance rather than an attitude of scarcity or lack. And when that happens, it makes me feel motivated, makes me feel happy and ready 
to go out into the world and do good. I hope that it does the same for you as well. Thank you so much for watching today. If you would like a copy of this story and the slides from today's episode, you can go to esofterside.com for your own copy. And that information is in the description box below as well. And I hope that you all have a wonderful holiday season and a beautiful Thanksgiving. And remember to be thankful every day as well. And for the softer side, I'm your storytelling life coach, Shelley Carney. I want to share with you an amazing free mini course I've developed for my subscribers to reduce stress and achieve inner peace. This mini course provides tips, exercises, and guided meditations to further enhance relaxation and bring calm to a frazzled life. Simply visit eSofterSide.com to get your free mini course. And while you're there, you can also schedule a free coaching call with me to address your personal needs when it comes to releasing pain and achieving happiness. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Peace be with you. Namaste.